Well, this is JC one more time. <clears throat> you know, I haven't done very much lately. I've sort of been preoccupied uh, with a few things, <clears throat> a few happy things, and then some things that are not so happy. They're kind of sad, but all with fond memories. But anyhow, um, I was talking to a dear friend of mine, uh, a lady friend I sing songs with um, uh, uh, on our jam sessions and a few other things, a, a very dear friend. And I, I remember the story. I remember the thing that happened to me many years ago uh, back in Myrtle Point, uh, Oregon. It's out on the, close to the coast in Oregon. Uh, when I was playing a single, I was playing music, just uh, my guitar and me and my amplifier, and I had a little a little uh, Gibson drum machine. I could hook it in, and I could get different rhythms on the drums. And I sat on my stool, and I turned my amplifier and guitar on and set my little drummer on, and I sat there and sang all kinds of songs just about any song that uh, most of the people would like to hear. I knew a lot of songs in those days, a lot of Hank Williams and Hank Snow, all the Hanks, Penny, Williams, Snow, Thompson, Lachlan, all the rest of them. Anyhow, it was quite a life for me. Um, I was between marriages, and uh, so it's just uh, my clothes, my guitar, and amplifier, my little sideman drummer, and my car, and that was it. Um, so anyhow, at this particular time, I had played a gig over in Coquille, at the Coquille Hotel for a couple of nights, and the man who owned the Myrtle Hotel heard me and offered me a, a job there for a while to do a single at his motel, so I took him up on it. And it's a very nice fellow. Anyhow, I started this story to, to my friend, um, uh, Sandra, and uh, I remembered about one time when I was in the, uh, in the bar, uh, walking along by the bar, uh, where I played music, and there was a little old man who was sitting in a booth alone. And as I walked by, he stopped me, and he said, Hello, come on over and sit down. And, and I looked at him. I knew I didn't know him, but evidently he thought he knew me. So I said, Yeah, what the heck? I went over and sat down in the booth by him, and he said, I'll, I'll, I'll buy you a beer. And I said, yeah, Well, that's all right. I don't really want one. But he insisted, so he went ahead and bought me a beer. And we sat there, and we started talking, and this guy was talking to me like he knew what I was like I was supposed to know what he was talking about. And I finally stopped him. I said, Mr., I don't know who you think I am, but I have no idea what you're talking about. And he looked me over real close, and he says, Oh, my God, I don't believe it. There's a You're the spitting image of so-and-so. And I forget his name now, but he called this man's name. And he said, uh, uh, I asked who this is. And he said, Well, he's a man who owns a cattle ranch here. He raises black Angus cattle. And, my God, you look just like him. Uh, and so... Anyhow, we talked a little bit, and uh, oh, I went up and played a few songs, and and uh, came back, and he motioned me back over to the booth, and oh gosh, he had a few by then, but and he said, oh, I, you're just the best singer I've ever heard, and he just he lauded me, and he just complimented me so much it almost embarrassed me, even though, although I did enjoy it, and he asked me please sit down, and so I sat down. This time I had a, I had a beer with him, and. And he asked me for my autograph. <laughs> so I wrote my name down on, a, on one of the cocktail napkins. And I, golly, I was really impressed with this. You know, nobody had ever asked me for an autograph before. But evidently, he thought someday this might be worth something. Anyhow, that's where I stopped the story over there. But there's more to this story than that. Uh, it, it's really a very touching story. And I'm going to tell it. It's about this man uh, who looked just like me. And I wish I could remember his name, but I can't. So I'm going to go on from there. And I'll read the rest of this off. I was going to send this email to my friend, but instead I decided to go ahead and make a little video on it and put it on there. And I'll just send her the link and she can listen to me ramble and tell the story. <laughs> I'm very good at both, I guess, rambling anyhow. So anyhow, uh, without further ado, this is the way the story goes. I said, honey, I, or, uh, uh, <laughs> Sandra, I'll finish the story of my mistaken identity. This old man, man had been in here many times, but this is the first time he was here after I began playing music. Now, I did a single on Tuesday and Wednesday, and I hired two more musicians for a trio for the weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, and Monday was my day off. Um, well, the old man listened to me play some, and he kind of went nuts. He sent me a beer, and he asked me to come to his booth at my break, and I humored him, and I did. I sat down, and he immediately started telling me that I was the best singer he had ever heard, and he wanted to give me a $20 bill. Well, I should have taken it, but I figured he might be a little bit tipsy, so I didn't take it. Then he asked me for my autograph, and I signed my name on a cocktail napkin. He was very proud, and so was I. First time I'd ever given anyone an autograph, first time I'd ever been asked. 
Anyhow, he then he told me about a cattle rancher in that area who raised Black Angus cattle. He swore we were identical twins. Uh, I listened to him, and we chatted for a while. Then I went back to the bandstand and finished out the night. The old man came up and put the 20 right below my chair. He was a character. This time I kept it. Oh, by the way, he liked Hank Williams songs. Now, the next Monday was my day off, and I walked around town a bit. Uh, then later on, I went to the hotel. I was sitting at the bar, sipping on a beer and feeling a little bit lonesome, and a little bit sorry for myself, and wondering what the hell I was doing here all alone. And this man, my twin, came in. Now, this is on Monday, my day off. He walked right up to me and asked if I was a singer. He introduced himself and looked me over pretty well. He chuckled, my God, you look just like me. I said, well, you look like me too, and we had a laugh about that. And he was all around just a little bigger than me, but otherwise he was a spitting image of me, and of course I was a spitting image of him. Uh, the only difference was he had a gold tooth in the front, and he was a little bit taller than I was. Anyhow, there were a couple other men with him, and he introduced them to me, and we shook hands all around. And he got down to why he was there. Um, he, uh, uh, he asked if I knew what a tontine was, and I told him I didn't. It seems I'd heard the word, but I, offhand I couldn't think of what it was. First he asked when I would start the music, and I told him, tonight was my night off. He asked if I'd play some, and I told him no, that I didn't get paid tonight, and besides, I needed a day off. Then he asked me, then he told, asked me about the tontine, if I knew what it was. He said he'd been in Korea with the Army, and he had gotten to know his squad of ten or so men very intimately. They were about as close as anyone could be, and I, of course, I, I believe that. He said at first it was just smelly and noisy at the front. Then the North Koreans mounted a big offensive and began shelling the soldiers' positions. Uh, he said they were huddled in a bunker together, and they began to wonder if any of them would make it out of this alive. Then one of the men said, we need a tontine. The rest wanted to know, what the hell is a tontine? And he explained it was a sacred pact between fighting men. They would all hold hands, and they would agree that if some of them were killed, the rest would celebrate them on this same day, the date, every year for the rest of their lives. Uh, he said they would set up drinks for the house all night on this date. No one else could buy his own drink, and they would sing songs and celebrate their lost comrades. So they did. They all held hands, and they swore on their honor that this would be their tontine forever, as long as any of them lived. Then he told me he would pay me any price I named if I would just get my guitar and play along with their singing. Well, you can see how it is. I told him I'd be happy to play for them, but there would be no charge. So we played music and we sang songs and drank beer and booze and we laughed a lot. and We cried some too, until the hotel bar closed at 2 a.m. There were about 30 or so people there, ones who came with him and others who came in and wouldn't leave. After the music and the celebrating stopped, this man called for quiet, and he raised his glass, and he said, here's to our brave comrades who died for us, and God and their country, and here's to all the rest, the soldiers everywhere who did the same, who died for us all, for our God and for our country, the greatest in the world, the United States of America. We all said, here, here, or something to that effect, and we drank our drinks to honor those who died for our freedom. Then it became very quiet, and someone asked him how many had died and how many were left alive. He said one soldier had died in an army hospital a few weeks ago from the result of that day in Korea after being there in the hospital for a number of years. And he choked up a little bit and said, I'm the last man alive for my squad. God bless all my brothers. And he turned his glass down on the bar, and he waited until most of the others had done the same. And he waved at everybody and he left, and I never saw him again. After the bar cleared out, I asked the bartender how often this fellow came in, and he said, just once a year, on this date, every year. Then he handed me a $100, $100 bill, and he said, this is for you. He wanted you to have it after he left. It was a very wonderful day for me. I remember it so well. I'm so impressed with the love and honor soldiers show for their fallen comrades. We can all be proud, as proud as this man was, for his fallen brothers, for his com comrades in arm, and for their tontine, which I know if this man's still alive, 
happens on that same day every year and will for the rest of his life. <laughs> this is JC, and this is a true story. It really happened to me. And thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it.